Um, Daniel is going to talk to us about Ansible. All right, so first a little bit about me. Uh, I work at Real Estate at Comdau. We manage uh, two data centers and a whole lot of cloud services, um, and we try to sell houses with them. <laughs> um, the, you can find me on the various contact details there, and that's all I'm going to say about me. All right, Ansible. Um, Ansible's designed uh, to kind of replace Puppet, Chef, Capistrano, those sort of tools, and to make them a lot easier to use. Um, so Ansible's config management is basically a simple YAML, and it's basically a bunch of YAML lists that you use to define things. Um, and one of the main goals is you should be able to use it within 15 minutes of installing it. Um, that depends, but it's mainly that way. Um, one of the other things is you don't have to install anything on the host you're managing unless it doesn't have Python. Um, if you have Python 2.6, that's it. That's all you need. Um, if you have Python 2.4, you need to install Python simple JSON module, and then you're good. Um, on the managing host, you need Python 2.6, and you need a whole bunch of other modules. But most distributions will have those as dependencies, and you won't care. Um, and one of the other things is, instead of having some crazy authentication scheme that uses certificates and requires a lot of um, it basically just works on top of SSH, which means if you already have SSH set up and you have like a shell host that has keys to get to all your other boxes or some kind of Kerberos system, it'll just use that and it'll work fine. Ansible is designed to do config management and do deployments and do ad hoc management tasks that you may need to do. So it has a whole basically bunch of features. Sometimes that feels a little wrong, sometimes it feels perfect. Um, and one of the other things is it tries its best to be idempotent. You can write Ansible uh, playbooks that aren't idempotent and will do the same thing over and over again. Um, but most of the time the system should be left in the same state and if you run it again you should see no changes. So I'm going to do a demo and hopefully it will work. So basically I've got a virtual machine running over here, which is still up luckily. Um, and I'm going to show you basically how to use Ansible on the command line for ad hoc style tasks. So Ansible, and the host is just named host, and I've already added it to my hosts file, and I've added it to the Ansible configuration, which basically just lists a bunch of hosts and what groups they're in. Uh, so what I'm doing here, I'm running the command module, and I'm going to tell it to cat, etc. red hat release. Um, because I haven't installed keys on this box yet, I want to tell it that it needs to run as root and that I want it to ask me a pass ask for a password. And for some reason it wants my key anyway. And there we go. There's the uh, Red Hat release file. Um, so one of the other parts of Ansible. If you've used Puppet and Chef, you may know about Factor or Ohi. Um, Ansible includes one called Setup, and it returns its data. It returns its data JSON style. Um, so you can pass that with anything, really. Now I'm going to copy my SSH key to the machine and show how it won't ask for, uh, I don't have to ask for a password anymore. Alright, so now I should be able to run the setup set module without any arguments. Ta-da! Uh, and finally, Ansible lets you group a whole bunch of commands together for, say, a deployment or basically just to config manage the machine. So this is the format it uses. Um, it's a YAML file. The three dashes at the start give that away. 
Um, you can optionally name it, but names pretty much everywhere are optional. Names help if you want to refer back to them later. So um, we, we list the host this run on, which is just our host. Um, we tell it we want it to install Apache with yum. And when it installs Apache, we want it to notify the restart Apache named handler. So if we go down the bottom, there's a bunch of handlers here. One's named Restart Apache. There's a whole bunch of others. And essentially what we're doing is installing Apache, setting, uh, copying across a config file, installing an index, copying across a, a GIF, enabling port 80 on our firewall, checking that IP tables or configuring it to start, doing the same thing for Apache, and that's it. So, our Ansible playbook is the command we use to run playbooks. And I should just be able to run it like that. The install of Apache is going to take a little bit because it has to talk to um, uh, Fedora repos or Red Hat repos. Um, so, any questions while this happens? No? Nope. Yes? Uh, does it work well with SE Linux? Um, yes, it actually includes a whole lot of uh, modules that can handle SE Linux contexts and setting files with different contexts and stuff. So, um, so there we can see it's installed it, set everything up, restarted Apache, and we should be able to... Should have pre-started Firefox. Ta-da! <laughs> Any questions? Can you run that again? <laughs> <laughs> I can reset the machine. Oh, yep. Sure. Sorry, if you've got questions, can you put your hand up so we can capture it on the AV? So you can see the second run through, it's not doing anything. And it's just saying that everything's OK and zero things have been changed. So I think I saw in your um, playbook that you defined or a spot where you could define multiple hosts. Yes, so you can. So the hosts uh, line here accepts either comma separated hosts or it accepts group names. I haven't really gone into groups because it's a little bit of a complex topic. How well does it run in parallel if you had a lot of hosts? Yeah, so if you run it in parallel. It goes to each host, so for each step you do, it goes to each host and does that step at the same time, and then it waits for them all to finish, and then continues with the next step. You can set a serialization um, number, which then runs it on, say, three of those hosts, and then goes to another, and another three, and then another three, so it runs the whole playbook with that three, then the next three, and so on, which is really good for deploying web applications and stuff like that. There's a pretty big ecosystem of Puppet modules and Chef cookbooks built yep. around those tools for reuse and sharing and mm -hmm. that sort of stuff. Does Ansible have a similar sort of ecosystem or is it more I write my own special things for my special deployments? Uh, generally, people only write the YAML files and because the YAML files can't do too much without modules, you don't see... Uh, you see people writing modules but they end up submitting them back to Ansible and you end up with them in the release a couple of months later. Um, like there are a few repos for things that are never going to make it into core. Um, with Ansible modules, you can actually write them in whatever language you feel like. Um, I've written a few in Bash, although passing JSON in Bash can be a bit of a pain. Um, but yeah, so you get a bit of a mix. Um, you can usually find someone with a module you want or just find one in the Ansible contributors. The mailing list is pretty hot with that sort of stuff, so. Uh, um, is there any uh, concept of delegated administration from the central server? So if you've got 10,000 machines you want to send out yep. to? Or, yeah, uh, so each task here can also take a keyword um, like name, action, notify. 
Uh, it can take one called delegate2, which is basically the host name you want to run that on. If you give it local, it'll run it on the local host without actually SSHing anywhere. And so you can control things like net scalers or load balances. Is there any possibility of uh, you know, setting to a host file, making sure it's the same across everything? Is yeah, kind of um, so it? if you basically wrote a playbook um, with the hosts here and put either all, which is the keyword for every host, or just put a list of all the hosts you want it to be the same on, and then here you add a copy thing that copies that host file out, it will copy it out to every single host. And if you run it again, so set it up on cron, you can either use Ansible pull, which runs, or you can use Ansible here, and just push it out to every machine over and over again. Uh, one. Uh, with your playbooks, how yep. do you manage that? Do you have a playbook for your entire infrastructure, or do you have a playbook per machine, or playbook per it's really, task? It's really however you want to do it. Um, most of the time I've been doing it um, by running, uh, having a playbook for each service I manage, and then having all the machines in that list. So I've had one for you know web applications, one for um, NameD and stuff. Um, but I've seen a few people do it host-based. They create a playbook for each host, that sort of stuff. It's really flexible, and you can include other playbooks from playbooks, so you can have a whole lot of reuse and fanciness. Okay. I think I'm out of time anyway. So. <laughs>